this lesson, we're going to start talking about interpretation of arterial blood gas results. For this lesson, we're going to look at the patho behind it and what's really going on with the patient, the why behind the interpretation. And we're going to give you the three steps that you'll use every single time when you interpret a blood gas. Now, in this lesson, we're going to interpret based on the patho. And then in the next two lessons, we're going to give you two tricks or quicker methods to interpret without having to think about it for too long. So let's get started. Like we talked about in the last lesson, there are three main things we can gather from an arterial blood gas, acid base balance, oxygenation status, and other issues. Acid base is what we're going to look at in the next few lessons. Oxygenation involves PaO2 and SaO2. We'll have a whole lesson in this course on understanding what's going on oxygenation wise. So make sure you don't miss that. It's still super important. And when I talk about other issues, I'm referring to the information we can gather from lactic acid, base excess, and base deficit. Each one of those has their own lesson as well. So we'll explore those more later. So there are three basic steps to interpretation of an arterial blood gas. Now these are gonna make more sense as we go along, but I wanna present them here so that you can keep them in mind as we go through this. First step is to look at each of the three main values, which is pH, PaCO2, and bicarb or HCO3, and determine whether or not they are acidosis, alkalosis, or normal. The second step is determine the source, either respiratory or metabolic. And the third step is to determine if there's any compensation. So let's look at each of these steps in more detail. The first step is always to evaluate each of the values. So for our pH, the normal value is 7.35 to 7.45. Anything less than 7.35 is considered acidosis. Anything greater than 7.45 is considered alkalosis. For our PaCO2, remember I always write these backwards. This is how I remember this. 35 to 45 is normal. Anything greater than 45 is acidosis and less than 35 is alkalosis. Remember, CO2 equals acid. For our bicarb or our HCO3, the normal value is 22 to 26. And I've heard people say things like, oh, these are the best years of your life. So that's how you can remember these numbers. Remember, bicarb equals base, so less than 22 is going to equal acidosis, and greater than 26 is going to equal al alkalosis. So when you get your results, the very first step is always to figure out what is abnormal. Then we have to figure out what the source is. When we're interpreting, there are two main sources, respiratory and metabolic, and then you can have an acidosis or an alkalosis for each one. So again, you can have a respiratory acidosis, a respiratory alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, or a metabolic alkalosis. For respiratory, we look at the CO2. When we have a respiratory source, it's because of an excess or a loss of CO2 due to some sort of altered breathing pattern. We breathe off CO2 with every breath, so if we're breathing faster, we blow off more CO2. If we're breathing too slow, we will retain more CO2 and our CO2 level goes up. So if CO2 is high, it's acidic, and low is alkaline. Remember, CO2 equals acid. For the metabolic source, we're going to look at our bicarb. An excess bicarb indicates alkalosis, remember bicarb equals base, and a low bicarb indicates acidosis. The reason we might see a metabolic source is because of an increase in acids or a loss of acids from a metabolic source. We could also even see a loss of bases from a metabolic source. There's a lot of examples here. For example, lactic acidosis, ketoacidosis, or this loss of acids from vomiting and getting rid of all of our stomach acid, or even an issue with the kidneys not regulating bicarb like they should. Now we're gonna talk in way more detail about all of these things in their particular lessons, but just know that if the bicarb seems to be the source, then it's a metabolic issue. So I want to look at some examples really quickly with just the first two steps to make sure that you know how to do that basic initial interpretation. In this lesson and in the next two lessons, you'll find a bunch of practice examples. 
They are all the same in each lesson, but I want you to use a different method each time and figure out what works best for you. In this case, we're just going to look physiologically at what's going on to figure out the issue. So here's our first example, and I've put the normal values up here for you uh, as a reference. So step one is to determine whether each thing is acidosis, alkalosis, or normal. pH of 7.52 is high, so it's alkalosis, okay? A PaCO2 of 28, that is low, so it is alkalosis. A bicarb of 22 is normal, right? I know it's on the edge of normal, but it's normal. Okay, so step two is determine the source. So if we know that our pH is showing alkalosis and that our PaCO2 is also showing alkalosis, we can reasonably assume that the CO2 is the source, right? So this would be a respiratory alkalosis. Okay, let's do another one. Step one, evaluate the values. pH of 7.29 is low, so it is acidosis. A CO2 of 37, that is normal. A bicarb of 16, that is low, so it is acidosis. All right, step two. What's the source? Well, we see that the pH is showing acidosis and our bicarb is also showing acidosis. Now, since the CO2 is normal, we can reasonably assume that the bicarb is the source. So this is a metabolic acidosis. So now that we've done a couple of examples of just the first two steps, let's look at compensation. So what does compensation even mean? Compensation is when one system is trying to fix the problem caused by another. So if there is a metabolic issue, then we will see the respiratory system kick in to try to compensate. Okay? Now there's three main compensatory systems in our body. One of them is this set of buffer systems that are constantly working in our bodies to make slight changes to help maintain homeostasis. So the three main buffers that we have are carbonic acid, sodium bicarbonate, and potassium. Now let me just give you the basics of these. The big thing to remember here is that the level of acid is determined by the amount of hydrogen ions floating around in the blood. More hydrogen ions is more acid. Less hydrogen ions, less acid or more alkaline. So carbonic acid is going to help buffer our alkaline situation by giving more acids and giving up those hydrogen ions to help increase the level of acid. Sodium bicarb helps to buffer acidic situations by trading a sodium for a hydrogen ion to absorb those hydrogen ions and get them out of the bloodstream. Now, potassium, this is different. Potassium has the same charge as hydrogen ions. It has that one plus. And most of the time, potassium lives inside the cells. Think circle K, right? Potassium lives inside the cell. So if I have all of these extra hydrogen ions outside my cell that are causing this acidotic state, then my body is going to start making those trade places. I'm going to shift the hydrogen inside the cell and pull the potassium out. And what that does is it helps to decrease the level of hydrogen ions in my blood. The problem is it also creates more potassium in my blood. So while this works wonderfully as a great buffer, it can also cause more problems because it can lead to hyperkalemia. Okay. Now the other two buffer systems that we have are going to be the lungs and the kidneys. And we've already briefly touched on these. The lungs will kick in within minutes to help regulate the CO2 levels by breathing faster to get rid of CO2 or breathing slower to hold it. So if I am in an acidotic state and I want to have less acid, I'm going to breathe off more CO2. 
That way I get rid of it. CO2 equals acid. That helps to decrease my acid levels. Okay. Same thing, vice versa. If I'm too alkaline, I'm going to breathe slower and hang on to more CO2 to increase my acid levels. The problem, again, is that the body can only handle these respiratory rate alterations for so long. Now, as far as the kidneys, it does take them much longer to kick in and start helping with compensation. But once they do, they can help for quite a long time. So that's good. So the kidneys will excrete or retain bicarb to help regulate the pH. In acidosis, it'll retain more bicarb because bicarb equals base. In alkalosis, they will excrete more so that it goes away. Okay, so that's the physiology behind compensation. Let's look at how we would actually see compensation on an ABG. So to interpret compensation on an ABG, what we're going to see is that the CO2 and the bicarb are abnormal and they're in opposite conditions. So if you see a CO2 representing acidosis, then you would see the bicarb representing alkalosis and vice versa. If the CO2 represents alkalosis, the bicarb would represent acidosis. So that's the first indication that there is some sort of compensation going on. So if we see that, but my pH is still abnormal, then we would say it is partially compensated. In other words, that other system is trying to fix the problem, but it hasn't quite fixed the problem yet. If we see that the pH has shifted all the way to normal, we would say that that's fully compensated. Even with full compensation, there's typically still a clear source to start with, so we do need to determine which one is the more likely source. So let's look at some examples. Remember, we're still going to use these steps in order, so let's do the first step now. A pH of 7.32, that's low, so that is acidosis. A CO2 of 55, that is high, that is also acidosis. And a bicarb of 29, that is high, and that would be alkalosis. Now, don't skip a step here. Step two is to determine the source, right? Well, if my pH is showing acidosis and my CO2 is showing acidosis, I can reasonably assume that my CO2 is causing the problem. Therefore, this is a respiratory acidosis. Now we can move on to step three. Is there compensation? Well, again, the first indication of compensation is that the PaCO2 and the bicarb are both abnormal and showing opposite conditions. Do we see that here? Yes, the CO2 is high showing acidosis. The bicarb is high showing alkalosis. They're showing opposite conditions. So we know that this base, this bicarb is trying to fix the problem. So the question now is whether it's partially or fully compensated. Well, our pH is still abnormal, right? So it hasn't quite fully compensated. So we would call this a partially compensated respiratory acidosis. Make sense? Okay, let's do one more. Step one, pH of 7.44. That's normal. A PaCO2 of 52. That is high. That's acidosis. A bicarb of 35. That is also high, which represents alkalosis. All right. So this is where you have to use your critical thinking skills. My pH is normal, but both my PaCO2 and my bicarb are abnormal. So there is something wrong, right? So now the question to ask yourself is, which side of normal is my pH on? Well, at 7.44, it would fall right about here. So it's kind of on the alkalosis side of normal, isn't it? So we can reasonably assume that since my bicarb is showing alkalosis, this was probably a metabolic alkalosis. Now, step three, is there compensation? Well, yes, we've already seen that, right? Both the CO2 and the bicarb are abnormal. They're in opposite conditions. And since my pH is normal, what we're seeing here is a fully compensated metabolic alkalosis. Got it? So make sure that you understand that CO2 shows us the respiratory source and that high CO2 is acid and that bicarb shows us the metabolic source and that high bicarb is alkaline because bicarb equals base. <laughs>
Remember that compensation is the other system trying to fix the problem that's been created. In the next two lessons, we're going to show you how to go through this process much faster with two tricks to ABG interpretation. But what you're going to see is we still use the same three steps. Evaluate the levels, determine the source, and look for compensation. So I hope that made sense to you. Again, this was kind of the long way to interpret ABGs by looking at the physiology of what's happening. Check out the practice fill in the blank and the worksheets attached to this lesson and do those problems using this me method before you move on to the trick methods. That's really going to help you figure out which method works best for you and which makes the most sense. Now go out and be your best selves today. And as always, happy nursing.